next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, a family in terror. My son is armed and dangerous. We know where he is. As a mentally distraught man stalks his loved ones. He shot me. Do you need an ambulance? Yes. Leaving one victim wounded and officers with only one choice. One. We begin in suburban Texas, where five years of growing problems finally came to a head for one family on July 20th, 1989. Actors portraying the family members have helped us reconstruct the chain of events that followed. Late in the afternoon, a woman we will call Susan went by her 78-year-old mother's house to check up on her. I left work, and for some reason, I didn't come straight home. And my mother lives very close to me and I stopped that day. I'm not sure why. Susan had been uneasy ever since her son had been released from a state mental institution nine days earlier. She had committed him after several incidents of violence and threats to kill the family. Now he was out and threatening to buy a gun. How tall is your grandson? Okay. Officer Regina Joseph had taken the police report from Susan's mother. She was frightened, and she was very concerned because Jimmy had a gun, and my mother had a bump on her head. He had knocked her down and hit her. And mother just instinctively grabbed the phone and dialed 911. As soon as he saw her dial the numbers, he ripped the phone out of the wall, and he left. The mother was particularly um, concerned about the son because he did state to her that he would kill a police officer. I called my daughter at work. I told her that he had been to my mother's and had assaulted her, and then he had a gun, and then he was psychotic, and that he was looking for the rest of us. Susan's daughter hurried home to get a few things before going to stay with a friend. I think it was very hard for Martha because at that point, Martha realized that she had been mistaken about the severity of his illness. I think we all thought he would come for me first because I was the one who had initiated the commitment proceedings and I was the one he had initially threatened and Martha had been his advocate. I don't think it ever occurred to her that he would hurt her. When we continue. He has a gun. Hello? Officer, where am I supposed to He's back What's the address, ma'am, please? Razor's Edge between life and death with the people who walk it every day. Trauma, life in the ER, tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Discovery Health Channel. And I told her to hang up and I called 911. The call came in to 911 at 6.23 p.m. Do you have some emergencies, AP? Uh, yes, I need a police officer. What's the problem, ma'am? My son uh -huh. is armed and dangerous. We know where he is. He is at my daughter's apartment. And what was the address there? Uh, this is the phone number. That's the number, where he is. Okay, what, what type of call was this, ma'am? She offered, she, ag she answered an aggravated assault call about for, on my son. He's schizophrenic. I figured since the mother was in a lot of stress and she was afraid, she could just remember the phone number. And that's why I decided to call that number. Mom, 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 Mom,
there. He has a gun. I could hear the alarm. I knew he had broken in. It was making it hard to to hear her. Is he in the apartment? I don't know, Mama. All right. He's the reason you can't move. Mama, he shot me. He shot you? He shot me. The first police officers to respond were Brian Dagowitz and his partner. 623, we received the call. We got an emergency call that there had been a shooting at a location. We were getting information from the 911 dispatcher who was on the phone uh, with the complainant that had been shot, who the suspect was, and a description of the suspect. My hand, it's all right, honey. It's just your hand, Martha. I knew that if anything happened, if I lost her, it maybe didn't matter if he came for me. Less than three minutes later, paramedic Mark Howell and his partner Buster Munson arrived. Can you hear him? I hear an ambulance. Yeah. I was relieved that the paramedics were there, but I was afraid that he was still out on the loose because he was very determined to go hurt the rest of his, his family. That's what the Martha told me. Should they come? Yeah, they're, they're coming. They come. Did you call for an ambulance? When we walked in, a lady had blood on her arms and all down the front of her shirt. Asked her if she's okay, and she was real uh, hysterical. So uh, we got her to come over and sit on the couch, uh, try to calm her down and see what her injuries were. The bullet entered her hand next to her index fingers and looked to be lodged on the back side of her hand towards uh, her wrist area. Are you allergic to any drugs that you know of? No. Oh, it's very clear that, uh, that it was a close call on her part in that he was attempting to shoot her in the face. And then just in the last second, she threw her hands up just in self-defense. What kind of gun did he have? Do you know? No. I'm probably a little angry at, at me because I didn't see this better. I think it could have been a lot worse. I'm very thankful that it was just my hand and that it was me instead of Brandon. On her way to the hospital, Susan flagged down a passing police officer, Tom Payne. My daughter, she's been shot. She's been shot. She stated to me that her daughter had been shot and that she needed to get up there right away and she wanted me to escort her. She then told me that it was her son who was the suspect on this shooting. She was very adamant that, that he was an extremely violent person and that any contact with him would be a, a very serious encounter. You can drive your car. We're going to let you drive yourself over to the hospital. Okay. Okay? I guess she particularly felt, for some reason, that I would be the one that was going to confront her son. And I, I never really could understand that, but she kept looking at me right in the eyes and saying, you're going to have to kill him. You're going to have to kill him. Payne had been heading to meet Sergeant Debbie O'Neill. Together, they went to Susan's home to look for her son. We proceeded over to the complex where the mother lived. We drove around the complex for a little while, and we were unable to locate the vehicle that we were looking for. We had received information earlier that uh, the suspect would kill any officer that attempted to apprehend him. We stopped the car about 30 feet from where he was in the driveway. We looked at him, he looked at us, and we exited the vehicle and drew our weapons on him. And Sergeant O'Neill commanded him a couple times there to get on the ground, to put his hands up. He looked, he thought. Don't move! Don't move! And he got down on the ground and just decided he just didn't want to do what he was thinking about. 620, we've got the suspect We're looking at him on the ground there and... Uh, 
he just looked over at us and he said, uh, I just didn't want to die today. On one hand, I feel very grateful that it wasn't a lot worse than it was. But at the same time, we have lost Jimmy. And yet he is still there because Jimmy's still very ill and very angry and still continues to say that when he gets out, there'll be a lot of dead bodies lying around. And we've been told that he means what he says. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.